In this video, we're going to cover all the topics on the business analysis and reporting exam. We're going to go through the AICPA blueprints and take it step by step. We're going to explain each of the representative tasks so that you can better understand which topic you need to prepare for. And then after watching the video, you can then download the blueprint and do a self-assessment to see which topics you already know really well and which ones you need to study a little better. So with that, let's jump in. So first, let's take a look at a summary of the bar exam. It's broken out into three different topics. Business analysis, which is 40 to 50% of the exam. Technical accounting and reporting, which is 35 to 45%. And state and local governments, which is 10 to 20%. So business analysis is essentially everything that was on the BEC exam before the BEC exam was taken away. And then sections two and three are all topics that were previously on the FAR exam. Let's take a look at the skill allocation. So only a small percentage is remembering and understanding, which is just regurgitating information. A vast majority of the questions are on application, where you have to demonstrate the knowledge of concepts. And then 30 to 40% is analysis, which is focused on task-based simulations, and taking multiple pieces of information and applying it to a situation. So first let's look at area one on business analysis. We have current period and historical analysis. This involves comparing financial statement results, such as looking at the prior period of financial statements to the current period. It involves ratio analysis, like with profitability ratios, liquidity ratios. It involves using reports and visualizations to come to meaningful conclusions. And it looks at different transactions and notes of the financial statements. Then we have non-financial and non-GAAP measures of performance. So this could include uh, benchmarking to compare yourself to your competitors. It could include using different measures like customer retention rate or employee turnover or using non-GAAP ratios like EBITDA ratio or core earnings ratios. And it's how we can use these different tools to analyze a company. From there, we go into managerial and cost accounting. So we first have to know the difference between fixed cost, variable cost, and mixed costs. Then we need to know about different costing methods such as absorption costing, variable costing, activity-based costing, process costing, and job order costing. These involve a lot of calculations. From there, we need to look at variance analysis, and then we need to look at price, volume, and mix analysis. The next section is prospective analysis, so looking forward into the future. So we need to know how to transform structured and unstructured data. We need to know how to prepare a budget. We need to know how to use a cost-benefit analysis, sensitivity analysis, what-if scenarios, break-even analysis, all for the sake of predicting the future. Then we look at capital structure. This is looking at the cost of capital. So what, are our, what is our weighted average cost of capital? So this involves looking at the cost of capital, loan covenants, liquidity, and leverage. Then we need to look at the various types of capital structures and how they affect the financial statements. From there, we look at methods to evaluate whether to invest in something or not. So we could use different assumptions to find the fair value of something. We could also use the payback period to determine whether we invest in it, the net present value, the economic value added, cash flow analysis, or internal rate of return. From there, we go into risk management. This is really focused on the COSO enterprise risk management framework. So it's talking about how we can respond to environmental, social, and governance related risks. It talks about different risks and opportunities, the different types of risks. Then it talks about strategies for mitigating those risks, and it involves performing a SWOT analysis of a company. From there, we move into economics. Now for economics, we need to know about supply and demand, including how you can change the supply and demand, what factors affect supply and demand, and we need to know how to calculate 
elasticity. From there, we need to know how inflation works and how it affects the prices of products. Next, we need to know how we can use ratios to measure the different risks of an entity, the interest rates, the currency exchanges, and the prices. We need to calculate the opportunity cost of a business decision. And then we need to interpret the impact of different strategies and operations and risks within the context of economics. Now we move on to area two, which is technical accounting and reporting. So this is taking the financial statement rules of particular accounts and testing them. So first we have indefinite, live, and tangible assets. So goodwill, for example. We need to know how we impair goodwill and other indefinite, live, and tangible assets. Then we need to know how we account for internally developed software. So when we spend money on developing software, how do we capitalize that software and how do we amortize that software? Next, we need to know about revenue recognition. How can we interpret agreements and contracts using the five-step model of revenue recognition? Then we have stock compensation. So when we are paid stock options, how do we value them? How do we account for them? What are the journal entries for stock compensation? Next, we have research and development costs. So when we spend money on research and development, what should we expense and what should we capitalize? Then we have business combinations. So this involves the journal entries for identifying whether you have goodwill from a transaction or a bargain purchase gain. So it's really focused on the journal entries for acquiring another company. From there, we have consolidated financial statements. We need to know about non-controlling interests, primary beneficiaries, and variable interest entities. Next, we need to know how a company's functional currency is affected whenever you have to consolidate the financial statements together. So you need to know how to make that foreign currency translation adjustment. Then we have derivatives and hedge accounting. So it talks about the different types of derivatives and how you can use them to hedge against losses in your investments. So to talk about interest rate swaps, options, and forward contracts. From there, we have lease accounting, but specifically from the perspective of the lessor. So we'll focus on the carrying amount of the assets and liabilities and what we recognize as income in the income statement. We also need to know about a lease back transaction. And then we move to public company reporting topics. So we need to know the regulation SX and what it entails and regulation SK. We need to know about XBRL business reporting and what its purpose is. And we need to know about the requirements for reportable segments. From there, we have the financial statements of employee benefit plans. So we need to know the difference between a defined benefit pension plan and a defined contribution plan. From there, we need to know about the differences between the statement of changes in net assets available for benefits and the statement of net assets available for benefits. Now we get to area three, which is on state and local governments. First, we're focused on the types of content in the annual comprehensive financial report. So we need to know about government-wide financial statements. What are the governmental fund financial statements? What are the proprietary fund financial statements? So we need to know the basics of each of these types of funds and how you account for them. Then we also need to know about the fiduciary fund financial statements. Not only that, but we need to know about the footnotes for the financial statements. We need to know about the section on management's discussion and analysis, how we have to compare our budget to our actual results. We need to understand any required supplementary information. And we need to know about financial reporting entity, including blended and discrete component units. From there, we have deriving government-wide financial statements and reconciliation requirements. So here we need to be able to reconcile between the government-wide financial statements, which are on the accrual basis, and the governmental fund financial statements, which are on the modified accrual basis. And then we have this section C. We need to know about calculating the net position, such as what is unrestricted, restricted, and net investment in capital assets. We need to know about the types of fund balances like assigned, unassigned, non-spendable, committed, and restricted. We need to know how capital assets are treated. 
then we need to know about how long-term liabilities are treated. From there, we need to know about inner fund activity, such as what happens when you transfer between two different levels of the government. So we need to know the journal entries for the transfers. We need to know non-exchange revenue transactions, when you're not receiving something of value in exchange for what you're paying. Then we need to know expenditures and expenses. This is under the modified accrual basis of accounting. And then we also need to know under the accrual basis of accounting. And lastly, we have the budgetary accounting and encumbrances. So we need to know the budgetary journal entry that is made at the beginning and the end of the year and how to record encumbrances for governments.